sports for the love of sports yeah. uh, and that sports helped me go into uh, study in the US on a tennis scholarship. When I came back, I continued playing cricket and tennis for the country and obviously that was not generating any income because you really played for the, for, uh, for the sake yeah. of the sport. Yeah. So I had to work. Uh, I studied business administration uh, in the US and I concentrated on insurance. So I do insurance business uh, right now. Till today, yeah. Till today, among other the businesses that I do. Yeah. I do some real estate and I also produce uh, a sports magazine. Uh, that is only uh, the sports magazine we have in the country called Sports Monthly. Yes. Uh, we uh, started in 2000. Uh, it's done about 82 issues and we are hoping that that magazine uh, can go even bigger yeah. nationally. Uh, What's your readership right now on that? We, depending on, uh, you know, ma as you know, magazines survive on, on uh, advertising income. Yeah. Uh, it's not on sales. So it depends on the income we generate and we produce between two to 5,000 copies yeah. subject to the, the revenue that we generate. Yeah. So I'm hoping that, uh, and we're trying to see if the government uh, sports ministry can come in or an NGO uh, that can come in to support sports so that we can make this a national uh, magazine where we, the readership and the magazine can produce maybe 50,000 copies, 100,000 copies that we can give it to the youths uh, and, and hopefully that will inspire them to come back into sports. Yeah. Now, is there like a cricket foundation or anything like that? Uh, not at the moment, but uh, the family is uh, planning to uh, form a sports foundation. Uh, we are hoping that when we launch the documentary, uh, we want to uh, create a Yusuf and Nargis Karim uh, sports foundation. Uh, where we hope to generate some income to try and encourage the next generation uh, to try and give something in sports uh, among other social responsibilities that I think each of us are responsible of. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to, I'm, I'm curious to know, is there like an intermingling like between do guys of who play cricket talk to people who play tennis talk to people who have athletics? Like, is there kind of, because it seems like all the sports are going through the same thing 50 years on. Is there, is there that um, kind of inter, intermingling? Unfortunately not. And, and I think you've brought a very good point. I think that is very, very important uh, to create that structure of meeting other sportsmen to understand the challenges that they go through vis-a-vis -vis the challenges that we go through yeah. and how we can complement and support because a sportsman will understand another sportsman. Absolutely. You know, so I think those dialogues are very important uh, uh, for the way ahead. Yeah. Now, for a new emerging talent who one day hope to represent Kenya, what would you say to them? What words of wisdom or encouragement would you say to them? As I said, that sports to me uh, is, is, should be an integral part of everybody's life. Um, and, and if you realize, even those who don't play sports right now, if there was Tiger Woods on television, or you would watch Sachin Tendulkar on television, even if you're not a sportsman, you would want to watch. Yeah. So sports is already in the system. It needs to go to the new level. And, and I think it's a responsibility of every parent uh, to encourage their youngsters, to encourage their, uh, their, their siblings or their youths, and create that atmosphere and make them involved in, in the sports because it's, it's very important. And now sports has gone to a new level. Yeah, it has. I mean, you can get scholarships to study, you can earn money. I mean, look at some of our footballers now. Yeah, you know, Wanyama, like Wanyama, exactly. I mean, Wanyama I is a big name. Him, I mean, yeah. He has now created a platform, Yes. hopefully for the uh, new generation in football. Yes, absolutely. You know, so and have, now the, the major sports, uh, especially football scouts, are going to be coming to Kenya. So absolutely. he's opened doors for many, many other absolutely. young, talented Kenyan footballers. Yeah. And, and that's where I said, again, the government needs to take the lead. It's very critical, and I'm consistently saying this matter, that the government, the leadership must take lead on this matter to make the entire nation feel that sports is an integral part of this country. Aren't you feeling that there, that is kind of being done? I mean, uh, in terms of brand Kenya has tried to bring to Kenya's awareness, you know, when our athletes come back and our marathoners come back, they're, not, they're recognized, there's a small bonus for them and things like that. Even our rugby players, do you feel like it's kind of, the government is trying to do something? Well, they, they have started, but I think we still need to take it up faster and to a, to a totally new level. And, yeah. and I always believe that the sportsmen and the sportswomen are the unsung heroes of this country. Uh, they need to be recognized. Yeah. They need to be appreciated. And I think there's no better opportunity than Kenya at 50. Absolutely. You know, this is the time now to, to recognize all the sportsmen and the women in the last 50 years that have done Kenya proud all over the world. Yeah, and I mean, there are a lot of uh, sport, Kenyan sportswomen or Kenyan champions who are now also investing in sports themselves. Because I think also the sportsmen should know the value. 
And isn't, that, uh, isn't there an opportunity there? Because I always feel like if we're relying so much on the government to assist us, nothing might happen, you know? Well, we, I'm not saying the government needs to assist financially. Yeah. I think what I'm saying is the government needs to facilitate. They need to create that atmosphere. They need to create that scenario where sports becomes an integral part of day-to-day -day life of every Kenyan. Yeah. You know, and, and as I said, there could be a lot of areas where, in, in, and I know of sportsmen, even in my time, that when they earned money, you know, it's one thing to make money. It's another thing to maintain money. Yes, you know, that's it's tougher. very true. Yeah. Maintaining money is tougher than making money. Yeah. I'm not saying making money is easy, yeah. but it's tougher. And I know of many athletes who made money in their time, but right now they are on the streets. They, they have this, no qualification. That's very true. They have no job. I mean, I have some of my colleagues who are in that position. And it saddens me that here is a, an ambassador of this country who has played at the World Cup. He is nowhere right now. Yeah. So I think it's important that it needs to have a partnership between the government, between the national bodies, and the athlete himself. And, and, and each one needs to take a responsibility because you want progress. You want the next generation to be better than where we are. And there's always a famous saying, leave a place better than what you found. Yes, absolutely. Add value always. Absolutely. Now, in terms of the... Because I've heard this a lot, actually, and I've interviewed quite a few sportsmen who are struggling now yet... In the past, they were extremely famous, especially in the 70s or in the 80s. What can be done to, by the government or just by Kenyans to help them? I think well, it's, it's not a very difficult thing. I think when, when a uh, an, uh, player represents the country, I think uh, along with the national body, they should create an, an atmosphere where there are some sh courses or some studies or discussions or given some knowledge on how to handle money. Yes. How to manage money. Yes. You know, because you, a sportsman has a, a life period of this many years, but he has a life to lead for so many years. Yeah. So what's going to happen th that period that is there? There may not be any money. Yeah. How is he going to sustain himself? And this is being done by Western nations, actually. Absolutely. I mean, as, Absolutely. you know, in the end, if you look at the people entering the NBA or even people entering the British Premier League, yeah. all of that is, yeah. is, comes with a package. Absolutely. But also, let's not uh, forget, even those athletes, some of them, like look at Mike Tyson right now. A guy yeah. who made billion dollars now is on the street yeah, because struggling. he didn't manage his money well. You see, yeah. he made money, but maintaining money is a different story. So we also have cases at international level, who have messed themselves up. And another side to it now is in terms of the skill, the experience, the talent of um, retired champions, do you feel they're being utilized enough? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's, uh, again, the responsibility of the national body that when you see your sportsman coming to the tail end of his career, a platform needs to be created to bring him back into the system in different forms. Yeah. I mean, there could be a sportsman who's very good, say, in administration, or a sportsman who's very good with the youths, or somebody who can be used in coaching. Mm -hmm. So you need to use that experience, because experience is something you cannot buy. It's something that you earn over the years. Yes. And if that experience is not used back into the system, I think it's the greatest injustice to the future generation. Absolutely. So where is sports? 50 years, at Kenya at 50, where is sports in this country? I think in the last 50 years, Kenyans have done very well uh, in sports, uh, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, and I think if uh, all the sportsmen do get together, and I always believe that there is always room for improvement. And I think if every sports organization create an open forum for their own sports, for, for example, if cricket, created an open forum dialogue where you bring in the past administrators, you bring in the past sportsmen and see that how we can uh, take the sport to a new level because this sport belongs to no individual. Yes, absolutely. You know, I think it's a responsibility of all of us. I think the biggest problem we have is there's a plenty of ego. Uh, there's a plenty of me, myself and I. Yeah. And, and unless we change that from the leadership, from all the associations, it will be very, very difficult. Yeah. I mean, we that. see it mostly in like football, but it's, it, it exists, I think, on every level. On every level. And I think if we take the sport as number one, and if we can just humble ourselves uh, and use each other's strengths, I think we can really, really go up yeah. and be an envy of the world. What do you think, what role do you think sports has played in the last 50 years in terms of in the evolution of Kenya to becoming 50? I believe that sports and arts are two areas where the prejudices are at the lowest. Yeah. Uh, if you look at every time Kenya plays 
it does not matter which tribe you are. Yeah. It does not true. matter which color you are. Yeah. It's Kenya. So if we encourage more and more of sports, more and more on arts, you know, movies, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could be anybody. So long as you are a Kenyan and you are doing proud to Kenya, it, is not, it doesn't matter whether you are a Mwindi or whether you are a Kikuyu yeah. or whether you are a Kalenjin or a Luo. Yeah. It does not matter. Yeah. So if we can bring sports more, I think the prejudices and unite our country there's no better unity than that. Yes, exactly. And I think another role that sports has played, even internationally, is it's put Kenya on the map. Because you'll tell someone, oh, I'm from Kenya, and they'll be like, oh, wow, you yeah. know. I mean, mainly for athletics, but I think that can be so broadened. Definitely. definitely. I mean, you know, when cricket was doing well, I mean, uh, all the, ask the, all the Kenyan diaspora. Yeah. They were all proud to say they're Kenyans because Kenya, cricket was the, is the only sport that has represented in the World Cup for five times. Wow. You know, the first time was in 1996 when we, we beat the West Indies, the world champions. Yeah. You know, that gave us a huge uh, name in, in world cricket. You know, then we played the 99 World Cup. And then, of course, the famous 2003 World Cup, yes. where we reached the semifinals. Yes. And then we played the 207 and the 211. So cricket is the only sport. So it tells you that we have a lot of talent in cricket. It's just that we need to be together, unite ourselves, put our differences aside and take the sport to a new level. Yeah. Now, you've, you've, you represented Kenya at most of those um, games. Do, is there a following? Like when you travelled overseas, is there a following? Would you get fans watching, Ke I mean, Kenyan fans definitely. coming out to support? Oh, yes, definitely. As we said, now it's a global village. You know, you've got Kenyans living all over the world. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I remember when we played the 1996 World Cup. Uh, and I just bumped into one of the lawyers last week and he says, you know, I was watching you in Pune. When wow. you guys beat West Indies. Yeah. You know, and here is a guy that I'm, he's talking, which was 16, 17 years ago. All the students, Kenyan students who are in India, came to watch us play that match. Yeah. So there was huge support. And, and Kenya is something that people love Kenya. You know, when you hear Kenya, there's some emotion yeah. uh, involved in Kenya. Whether yeah. it's a diaspora or anybody there is in the that. world. There is that something. Yeah. Even for some. people who have visited Kenya, they Correct. always are very there's nostalgic and sentimental about yeah, it. Well, I mean, how many countries has a beach uh, on one side, and hours later you've got a game park, and, and half an hour later you've got a mountain. Yeah. I mean, how many countries are blessed with, 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 uh, with what we have in this country? Yeah. But what, what next for Kenya, especially in terms of sports? Where do, where do you hope Kenya will be in the next 50 years? Well, uh, what I would hope is that first to have all the organizations uh, run a little bit more professionally. Yeah. Uh, they need to have a very clear structure on, on how the management would be. I think the constitutions that we have right now are totally outdated. They're colonial constitutions. Yes. The dynamics have changed. The situation has changed. I think it needs to be an all-inclusive uh, uh, organization where you need to involve all parties concerned and I would like to see a huge development structure in all the sports field. Yeah, uh, from now primary school age all, all the way, way up. As I said, primary, yeah. the underlands, and I think the estates need to be, to be looked at because I think there's a lot of talent there. Absolutely. That, that needs to be nurtured. And it would be nice to see corporates coming in uh, to so because uh, the corporates play a very important role. Yes, they do. And, and if they can come in to support sports, and I think, again, if the government can even consider giving some tax exemptions for any corporates that's supporting sports, you know, and I think that that can uh, take a, a huge uh, step yeah. uh, in, in taking our sports to a new level. And then you have a huge domestic, uh, quality domestic structure. I see no reason on us in the next 10, 15 years, if those are in place, to keep on producing the Tiger Woods or the, or the, or the, or the Sachin Tendulkar or the Beckhams. Yes, yes, absolutely, I see that. And maybe as an Uhuru baby, your final word for Kenya at 50? Well, I, I always say that I'm very proud to be a Kenyan. Yeah. Uh, I took a lot of pride uh, playing for the country. I take a lot of pride in, in what I do, even right now in business. I have everything that's in Kenya. I believe in supporting our own people. And I'm hoping that all the people in this country take this as a new dawn and let's take this country to a level that becomes an envy for the entire world.
Oh, absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Mr. <laughs> Kareem, for being my guest. Well, you've heard it from Uhuru Baby and sports legend who represented Kenya for 23 years on the national cricket team. That is Asif Kareem. And there is a documentary called The, the Kareems. It will be showing in Iran in December as we celebrate our independence. And we will definitely be inviting uh, Asif Kareem back to tell us more about the documentary and where we can watch it. Now, you know, I think the one thing I'm taking from this interview you is let Kenya be the envy of the world in the next 50 years. That is the legacy we can have. And as Asif is proud of his country, let's also be proud of Kenya and do our bit to make Kenya everything it can be. Remember, Kenya is not the place. Kenya is the spirit in you and the spirit in me. Have a blessed afternoon. My name is Mumbi Wettstein. Catch me next time on The Perspective.